what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel ron yates here hope you guys are doing very well today if this is your first time visiting the channel go ahead and subscribe to the channel and while you guys are at it go ahead and smash the like button i would totally appreciate that well guys we've been talking about the federal reserve the big changes that are coming down the pipeline its impact that you know fed chair jerome powell has been having on the economy the stock market the housing market our credit card interest rates and how Americans are getting decimated that are, you know, Americans with debt who are literally being decimated by higher interest rates, higher minimum payments. We've been talking about uh, what we've been seeing in the housing market. Uh, you probably saw my video recently. Uh, our mortgage payment just went up by like $250 because our property taxes went up, plus the uh, homeowner's insurance went up. So, of course, it raised the amount that needed to be in our escrow account. It's been a mess. But... How do we increase our net worth in spite of what is happening in our economy, right? Well, one of the best ways to understand to how to progress forward and increase our net worth is to understand, well, where do we stand? What is the average net worth by age? And so we're going to talk about that today. But I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys asking, hey, are the banks safe? What's going on with the banks? How do I invest money? How do I protect myself, protect my family? How do I prepare for the future? When banks are collapsing, we've had multiple bank failures, Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic Bank, uh, Signature Bank, and according to Warren Buffett, more banks will fail. And I want to share this with you guys. So uh, just take a look at this clip here. Always something, right? So billionaire investor Warren Buffett says, we're not through with bank failures. Check this out. Are we through the banking crisis at this point? Or, well, we're not through we with not? bank failures, but... but we are, we are through the depositor. The depositors haven't had a crisis. The owners of banks may have lost a hell of a lot of money. The people who bought the debt of the, of the holding company, may, they may lose a lot of money. People can, they can lose a lot of money, uh, but the depositors aren't. And so you don't need to turn a dumb decision by managers into a panicking the whole citizenry of the United States about something they don't need to be panicked about. I just don't know why you do it with people. We set up the FDIC to relieve the worry of people. And initially, it wasn't the same institution but that you're it is saying now. on one hand, okay, no depositor is going to lose money. On the other hand, you're saying we're not through the bank failures. The banks are no bust. But depositors aren't going to be hurt. So, Warren so you guys heard it yourself. You heard it from the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett himself. He said that banks will continue to go bust. The banks will continue to fail. But... Account holders, depositors, people like me and you, we're not going to lose any money. So that's good. That's good to hear. And to be honest with you, federal, you know, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC, they have come in and taken care of people. In fact, there is not a single depositor so far that has actually lost any money in the banking system. So this is part of why um, I like looking for some of the highest yield money market accounts and the highest yield savings accounts. Um, that are offered across the United States through different banks, regional banks, big banks. Um, and I look for diversification through these different uh, banks. So I'm not just going to have one bank account, just in the fact that, you know, just in, case, in the case that or in the event that my bank happened to fail, I want to make sure that my money is spread across multiple different solid banks. Um, and, um, and so I'm going to achieve the same kind of diversification that I would want to achieve through the stock market or any other type of investment, I'm doing that through the banks, all right? So uh, now, one of the wealthiest people in the world, you know, are the founders and the CEOs of big name companies such as Warren Buffett. He owns Berkshire Hathaway, right? You got Jeff Bezos, uh, you know, previous former CEO and founder of Amazon. You got companies like uh, Am uh, Microsoft, founded and previously CEO'd by Bill Gates. Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook and Meta, right? So these individuals, they have clearly amassed a significant network due to their success in these different companies, right? Now, most of us are pretty well aware that, you know, our network doesn't come remotely close to any of these different celebrity billionaires that we just talked about, let alone uh, Warren, you know, Oprah Winfrey sitting at two and a half billion dollars or Jay-Z at one point three billion dollars, right? And it's also recently been reported that Elon Musk's net worth uh, is roughly a hundred or like two hundred billion dollars. So, you know, 
our net worth is not going to be anywhere near that. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't try. And there's no reason why the average person should not be worth a uh, million dollars if they follow the right strategies. So anyway, in this video, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the average net worth by age. And let's cover, you know, just some of the basic hints and tips and habits that we can build so that we can achieve that degree of net worth or at least, you know, a seven figure net worth in our lifetimes, which is very, very possible. So, you know, and in, in addition to some of the companies that have had significant impacts in the net worth of employees, because a lot of people say, oh, you'll never be rich working for someone else. And I disagree. So, for instance, Amazon stock price has grown exponentially over the years. This has made many of its early employees millionaires and even billionaires. So, you know, this is just one example. I even know tons of other small companies that are not on the stock market. They're privately held companies that have literally made their employees millionaires uh, over the years. So, uh, yes, you can become a millionaire working for someone else. Um, so let me I, I just wanted to kind of debunk that. Right. So let's go into this a uh, little bit of detail here. So. Average net worth by age, right? So if you're under the age of 35 years old, you really haven't been working that long. So it is statistically not in your favor to have a very high net worth because you're just getting started out, right? So let's talk about if you're less than, if you're younger than 35 years old, the median net worth is $13,900. Now the average net worth under the age of uh, 35 years old is $76,000. Now there's a big difference between the median net worth and the average net worth because the median net worth is literally, let, let's just talk about the averages, right? So let's just say you had nine, 99 people that are all making $50,000 a year or the 99 people who all have $50,000 in net worth, right? Well, then your average is gonna be $50,000. But if you have like, you know, Jay-Z, added as the 100th person in that average 100 people with their net worth, uh, it's going to it's gonna drastically skew that net worth higher. And so that's why you have net worths, um, you know, at $76,000, but the median net worth is $13,900 for people who are younger than 35. Evidently, there's a lot of um, higher net worth individuals out there that are skewing the number higher for individuals who are under the age of 35, right? Now, if you're 35 to 44, the median net worth is $91,000. Now, if you're 45 to 54 years old, the median net worth is $168,000. If you're between 55 and 64 years old, the median net worth is $212,000. If you're between 65 and 74 years old, the median net worth is $266,000. And if you're over the age of 75, then the median net worth is $254,000. So I just wanted to share the median with you guys because I feel like the median is a little bit more of an accurate or closer to an accurate or realistic figure to go on compared to the uh, averages. Now, according to the averages, though, I don't want to ignore the averages. By the time you reach 55 to 64 years old, the average net worth is one point one seven five million dollars. In other words, roughly one point two million dollars. By the time you hit 65 to 74 years old the average net worth is $1.2 million. So I just want you, you guys to understand like where you stand, at least, you know, you can see where you are, if you're ahead or if you're behind, maybe you can catch up. And we can do this through, you know, sacrificing and, um, you know, looking at ways to uh, achieve or obtain higher value, higher earning skill sets so that we can increase our incomes and make more money, right? And but increasing our income will not necessarily make you a millionaire. It will not necessarily make you financially free. That is, if you're increasing your expenses at the same time, at the same ratio that you're increasing your net worth, you're basically not getting ahead. And this is why, you know, we're seeing more and more people making well over a hundred thousand dollars a year living paycheck to paycheck, right? And so your net worth, let's just really talk about your net worth, right? So the calculation of your net worth is literally your assets minus your liabilities, and that equals your net worth. So let's just say you have no other uh, assets and no other debts except for your house, right? So if your house is worth $500,000 and you owe $400,000 on your house, your asset is worth 500, which is your house. 
your liabilities, which is the debt that you owe on that house, the mortgage is $400,000. So $500,000 is what your house is worth minus your liability, which is the mortgage, which is $400,000. $400, that means you have a net worth of $100,000. And so that is how you calculate your net worth. Assets minus liabilities equals your net worth, right? And so, you know, I know when I first started out, when I first found out about what is a net worth, like I didn't even know what it was. But when I figured out what it was and how to calculate it, my net worth was negative. I had a lot of high interest credit card debt. And my goal was just to pay off that credit card debt as quickly as possible. So, um, but let's just talk about some basic ways that you can, you know, follow to and, and strategies you can use to grow your net worth. So, you know, number one, figure out what your net worth is. That's really important to figure out where you are to see if you're moving forward or if you're moving backwards, right? And you want to start setting net worth goals based on your personal, your professional, maybe your financial goals. Um, and I would definitely uh, assign dates, right? So if I want to have a net worth, let's just say I got a $0 net worth. I'm, I'm baseline, right? I don't have any assets. I don't have any liabilities. I would set a goal of, you know, hypothetically $10,000. I want to have a $10,000 net worth by the end of the year. So I got, you know, if it's May, I got seven months to make this happen. So in seven months, I want to have a positive net worth of $10,000, right? And I would just go from there. Year two, I want to have a positive net worth goal of $35,000, $40,000, whatever the case is. And I would set like some short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals. Um, I would definitely be prioritizing my uh, building my assets, like increasing the amount of assets that I have, right? Limiting how much money I'm wasting um, on things that are not building my net worth getting out of debt if you have debt um, looking at ways to increase my income either through raises from the job looking for promotions maybe looking for a new job maybe starting a side hustle uh, or a small home-based business uh, and in addition to that you know uh, you got so obviously you got side hustles you got small home-based businesses but um, there's also a lot of people discount the fact that they can sell things. So you can also sell things that you're not using to help increase your net worth. So if you ran a garage sale and you had like, I don't know, $3,000 worth of junk that you're not using, you just came up $3,000. Um, also, leverage the stock market. The stock market has generated on average returns of between, you know, uh, 8 and 10%, 8 and 12%, depending upon the time frame that you're looking at the, the stock market. But over the long time, o o over the long term, the stock market has generated eight to ten percent returns in the S and P five hundred. You've got ETFs and uh, index funds, mutual funds that you can leverage to get these gains without being an expert in the market. Let the experts run the ETFs and index funds, and that's what I've done. Now, you know, obviously, none of this is financial advice. Uh, I just wanted to share these tips and tricks with you guys that that I've used over the years that have tremendously helped me out. Right? I definitely take advantage of free money opportunities that, you know, come from my, you know, from my job, right? 401k uh, contributions. Generally speaking, you work for a decent company, they're going to give you a match. So it's like for every $1 you put in, they're going to match you a dollar. And most companies do this up to 6%. So it's like, if you don't get that free money, it's like, <laughs> what are you doing? Right? And you can take that free money from the 401k matching contributions, um, and diversify those investments into different index funds and whatever uh, investment vehicles that they might have in the uh, 401k plan that your employer has, right? And of course, you know, minimize your debt. Don't take on any new debt. You don't have to, right? You know, I, I'm okay driving a, a older car with no, no car payment, um, knowing that my goal is to build my net worth. You know, I'm not worried about somebody's opinion of me because I, I might not have the nicest, newest car, but in a matter of a few years, they're going to wish that they sacrificed to the extent that I did because the goal is for me, I don't know what your goals are, but my goal is to not ever, uh, ever have to work, right? Now, it's not that I don't necessarily, it's not like I necessarily won't work, but I like knowing that I'm financially in a position so that I don't have to, right? So for me, my goal was always to be able to retire early, even though I wasn't necessarily looking to retire and do nothing. Anyway, drop me some thoughts, you guys. Let me know what you guys are, are thinking about what we discussed today. What are your goals? 
where do you want to be financially uh, in the coming years? Uh, um, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel, drop a like for the video, and let me know what you guys want me to talk about on the next one. Y'all be safe.